Thank you so much, Elise, for the introduction. My name is Haidira Del Rivero, and I am a medical oncologist at the National Cancer Institute, National Institute of Health. First, let's discuss what are clinical trials. Clinical trials are research studies that test how well new medical approaches work in people. The goal is to determine the safety and efficacy of a study drug. In terms of the clinical trials, we have different phases. Phase one is to determine the safety of the drug. Phase two is to determine what is the efficacy of the drug and also determine more safety as well. Phase three is when we compare drug with what we know, what is the standard of care options, and that would then lead to the approval of that drug that we're studying. Now let's discuss what are the clinical trials. A few of the clinical trials are well available for well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors. First, let's discuss the nether twist study. The nether twist study is a phase three study to evaluate the efficacy and safety of Luthathera in patients with grade two and grade three advanced gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. The aim of this study is to determine if Luthathera in combination with octreotide, 30 milligrams, can be given as a first-line treatment in patients with higher grade neuroendocrine tumors. And that is when comparing with high-dose octreotide. The primary endpoint is survival without progression of disease. And the secondary endpoint of the study is to determine if this treatment can shrink the tumors as well as the quality of life and also to determine if this treatment can help the patients live longer with the disease. Now, let's discuss about the COMPETE study. The COMPETE study is a phase three study of efficacy and safety of 177 lutetian edotriotide in patients with gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. The aim of the study is to determine if PRRT can be given before everolimus. The primary endpoint of the study is the survival without progression of disease. The secondary endpoint is to determine if this treatment, when it's given prior everolimus, could then decrease or shrink the tumors, and also to determine if these patients can live longer with the disease. The inclusion criteria is patients that have somatostatin receptor positive gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. The next study that I would like to discuss is the NETREPI study. P is for pediatric. This study is a phase two to evaluate the efficacy endosymmetry, and what that means, the symmetry is also to determine the measurement and assessment of the quantity of quality of this type of radiation in adolescent patients with somatostatin receptor positive gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. The primary endpoint of the study, as we discussed earlier, is to determine what is the quantity of quality of given this type of treatment in pediatric populations from ages 12 to 18. Another important point about this study is that besides gastroenteropancreatic neuroendocrine tumors, this study is also able to treat patients with metastatic or advanced pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas. The next study that I would like to discuss today or mention today is a phase two study of 177 nutrition dot a day in patients with somatostatin receptor positive advanced bronchial neuroendocrine tumors. Dr. Pada discussed this study earlier today in her presentation. The next I would like to discuss is about PRT in combination with DNA repair inhibitors, and these studies are followed very closely. So what does that mean? So PRRT is a type of radiation, and when radiation is given to the tumor cell, it causes damage to the DNA of the tumor cell. And what the tumor cell is going to do is going to try to repair itself by activating protein or enzymes. These DNA repair inhibitors, what they're going to do is block those enzymes of those protein, and the hypothesis is it can make Luthathera more effective. There are three ongoing clinical studies of a PRT treatment uh, with Luthathera in combination with DNA repair inhibitors, and we're going to mention two of them very briefly. The first one is the phase one study. As we discussed earlier, the phase one study is to determine the safety of triapine, which is a DNA repair inhibitor in combination with Luthathera. Once the maximum tolerated dose and the safe dose is established on the phase one study, then it will move to the phase two study. 
The PI of the study is Dr. Amon Shahan. Now, I would like to discuss another phase one to study of Luthathera in combination with Olaparib. And I'm very fortunate to lead this effort together with Dr. Franklin, who is the PI of the study. Uh, phase one study I will discuss earlier is to determine the safety profile. And once we determine the maximum tolerated dose, then we can move to the phase two study. And the phase two study is also determined as well, what is the efficacy of the drug in terms if this combination can shrink the tumors. Now, let's discuss another study of importance, and this is a phase one study of uh, dot -tam t and this is what we call alpha emitters. Earlier today, you heard about the difference between beta emitters, which is luthathera, and alpha emitters. Uh, this study is led by Dr. Del Passant. And the primary endpoint of the study, since this is a phase study to determine the safety, is to determine what is the maximum tolerated dose to then move to the phase two study. The secondary endpoint of the study is to determine if the tumors can shrink with this treatment. Now, let's discuss about another study, and this is the cabinet study. The uh, PI of the study is Dr. Jennifer Chin. Cabosantinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, and this type of drug, what it does, it, it blocks the blood supply going into the tumor. Uh, this study is for advanced pancreas and small bowel neuroendocrine tumors. This is a registry study, meaning that this, the results are positive for this study. This can lead to the approval to give cabosantinib for pancreas and as well as small bowel neuroendocrine tumors. This is a randomized study with placebo. However, if the patient has progression of disease with placebo, then can receive open-label cabosantinib. The primary endpoint of the study is to determine uh, timed tumor growth. And secondary endpoint of the studies is to determine response rate, meaning the tumors can shrink with this treatment, as well as if the patients can live longer with the disease. Now, let's discuss a few clinical trials for patients with poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma. The first one that I would like to discuss is this uh, drug, which is a DNA repair inhibitor, as we discussed earlier with PRRT, which damaged the DNA. Chemotherapy can also damage the DNA. And by, by giving it with another DNA repair inhibitors, could this enhance the efficacy of the chemotherapy? This is in combination either with irinotecan or topotecan. This is currently on a phase one study, and once they determine the PI determined what is the maximum tolerated dose for the phase two, then the PI would then have expansion cohorts for small cell lung carcinoma, as well as for poorly differentiated neuroendocrine carcinoma. The PI of the study is Dr. Satya Das at Vanderbilt Cancer Center. Now, I'm going to discuss another study, which is cabosantinib. Uh, cabosantinib, we discussed earlier, is a tyrosine kinase, and this type of drug block the blood supply going into the tumor in combination with immunotherapy, nivolumab and epilimumab. And the aim of the study is to determine by giving cabosantinib with immunotherapy, could this enhance efficacy? After a few cycles, epilimumab will be dropped and the patient will continue with cabosantinib and nivolumab. Uh, the primary endpoint of the study is to determine if this treatment or combination treatment can shrink the tumors. And secondary endpoint of the study is to determine survival without progression of disease, as well as how long is the duration of response. Lastly, I'm going to discuss the study, which is a phase one to a study. Phase one is to determine the safety of the drug. And once we determine what is the maximum tolerated dose, then it will be moved to a phase two study of lorvinectidin, which is a type of chemotherapy with versosertive, which is another DNA repair inhibitor. I'm also very fortunate to work with Dr. Anish Thomas, who is the PI of the studies, enrolling patients with high-grade neuroendocrine carcinoma. Once we establish the phase two dose, the goal of the study is to determine what is the efficacy of the combination treatment in patients with high-grade neuroendocrine endocrine carcinoma. With that, I finish my presentation. I thank you all for your attention. And also, I would like to thank all of the principal investigators of the studies who allow me to present their work today. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.